Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Precisionary webinar. We actually have a returning webinar speaker today, and it is Dr. Jun Chi Wang from uh, Mount Sinai. So Dr. Wang is a distinguished neuroscientist who specializes in addiction-induced neuroplasticity and its effects on motivated behaviors. Um, Dr. Wang's extensive research journey spans various labs dedicated to drug addiction research, where he has developed a multidisciplinary approach incorporating electrophysiology, molecular biology, single cell uh, transcriptomics, and behavioral assessments. So a lot of um, direct structure function uh, investigations. And with a focus on unraveling the complex molecular foundations of addiction, Dr. Wang utilizes cutting edge techniques such as single cell RNA sequencing, um, particularly within the interpeduncular nucleus. His work not only enhances our understanding of addiction, but also highlights the importance of collaborative research environments and mentorship. And Dr. Wang here is also mentored by Dr. Paul Kenny. So during this webinar, Dr. Wang will explore key topics, including the role of the IPN in addiction in mood regulation, the application of single cell mRNA sequencing, and the neural mechanisms underlying gender-specific vulnerabilities to alcohol abuse. So with that, welcome again, and we are so thrilled to have you. All right. Thank you so much for Precision in Instrument. Uh, provide not only a wonderful cutting machine and also this uh, platform for me to share my finding with you. And thank you, Abby, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, today, I wanna share my uh, study about the sex differences at the transcriptomic, connectome, and the neurophysiological levels and how those sex differences affect the alcohol consumption in males and the females. Yeah, here's a brief introduction about my research journey. Uh, I started at a, uh, my PhD at Arizona State University, mentored by Dr. Ron Hammer, Ella Nicolina, and uh, Janet Neswander. And I focus on uh, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the ventral tegmental area uh, in social defeat stress-induced uh, cross-synthesization to psychostimulant. After that, I joined Dr. Yan Dong's lab at the University of Pittsburgh. There, I leveraged electrophysiology, optogenetics, and the calcium imaging uh, to illustrate the synaptic plasticity uh, in response to uh, cocaine. Also, how those plasticity contribute to the chronic relapse. Uh, most importantly, we study how exercise contribute to the synaptogenesis in cocaine addiction. And that study uh, was selected as the cover issue in biological psychiatry. And in 2020, I joined Dr. Paul Kenny's lab at Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Uh, there, I, I learned a single cell um, multi-omics approach uh, to guide my electrophysiology. And uh, I, I studied, uh, the, I focused on an understudied brain re re region called uh, interpeduncular nucleus. And there are three key components of uh, today's talk. First, I wanna share how I use high throughput multi-omics approach to identify sex differences in the midbrain at the transcriptomic and the connectomic levels. Also, I use single cell sequencing to guide my electrophysiology to unravel the relationship between gene expression and the neural transmission. Uh, also, I will explore the function of an understudy circuit, uh, which is the, the media venula to interpeduncular nucleus to media raffae nucleus in the regulation of alcohol consumption in a sex-dependent manner. So 30 million people in the US developed alcohol use disorder, AUD, and the, uh, the male drinks more than female. Also, the prevalence of AUD uh, is higher in males than in female. However, that uh, sex gap is uh, narrowing due to the increased prevalence of uh, AUD in females, especially among younger women. So there are several major sex-dependent biological differences between men and uh, women. First, uh, the women tend to have a higher uh, body water percentage. So even with the equal body weight, same amount of alcohol consumption, they intend to have a higher blood alcohol le levels. Also, the enzyme necessary for the metabolism of alcohol is uh, comparatively lower in female than in male. 
also the fluctuation of a sex hormone, such as uh, uh, estrogen and the progesterone affect the alcohol consumption uh, in female and also affect some health issue related to alcohol consumption. So all these sex dependent biological differences renders women more vulnerable to the health consequences uh, following alcohol consumption. For example, it uh, leads to more severe uh, cognitive dysfunction, psychiatric disorder, uh, cardiomyopathy, cirrhosis in the liver and cancer. So based on human study, mm, although males drink more than female, However, th this is controversial because uh, some studies show that the male drinking more than female is more like a culture, social thing. Uh, but another phenomenon is that when female begin to drinking, they have an increased escalation of alcohol con con consumption. It's a defined a telescoping effect. Also, the female will mm, suffer more uh, negative effect during withdrawal. Also, they have a higher likelihood of a uh, relapse uh, in response to stress and anxiety. However, in rodent study, the female drinks more than male. So first, we use two well-established behavior models to confirm in our lab, the female mice drinks more than male. So we use two models. One is drinking in the dark, another one is oral alcohol self-administration. And the, both models show that the females drink more than the males. So since the females suffer more health-related issue after alcohol consumption, we are wondering what is the neural mechanism underlying the sex differences in alcohol consumption. So that will be the focus for our study. So to understand that, first we want to know the uh, what brain region harbors the most pronounced uh, sex differences on the level of a gene e expression. To, so to achieve this, we use a spatial C sequencing technology. We use a whole platform provided by 10X Genomics called uh, uh, Visium. So first we cut the cryostat section of a male and a female brains and we mount it onto the tile provided by company. And this tile uh, comprises of a many 50 micron diameter D disk, and each disk contains millions of oligonucleotides. And each oligonucleotide contains a unique molecular identifier and a spatial barcode. So first, uh, those oligonucleotides will hybridize with the messenger RNA on the cells attached to those disks, so they can uh, capture the messenger RNA from those cells. Uh, then we're gonna do the reverse transcription uh, and the PCR to create the cDNA library. So those cDNA, they're gonna contain the messenger RNA and the UMI and the spatial barcode. Then we're gonna use next generation C sequencing to sequence all those cDNA. So after that, we can map those sequencing results back to its original anatomical spot. Uh, this way we can reconstruct the gene expression uh, on the brain slice. This is our result focusing on two levels of the brain. One is the limbic area, another one is the midbrain areas. Uh, so first we cluster those cells based on their spatial location. You can see the spatial cell clustering. Each cluster represented cells resides in a specific brain re region. Then we compare uh, the gene e expression within each cluster in males with females. And we notice that one brain region called the interpeduncular nucleus, they harbor the highest number of uh, differentially regulated genes, DEG. So then we naturally focus on this brain region. So we run those uh, DEG in a gene disease association database, we wanna figure out what kind of human disease those genes differentially regulated in the IPN is associated with in human studies. And we notice that the alcoholism is actually the second high on, on the list. Also, we also wanna know the function for those uh, uh, sexually differentially expressed gene. And we wanna know their function. So we put it into the enricher. Uh, 
and uh, the, they just match all those genes with all published papers in all kinds of uh, da database and tell us which function is uh, closest related to those genes. And the number one we found is related to synaptic, uh, synaptic tra transmission. So after the spatial sequencing, we know three things. The first, uh, if we're looking for sex differences, the IPN is a very promising target to lo look for them. And also those uh, differentially expressed genes, IPN, they related to uh, alcohol addiction. Also those, those genes, uh, they, they, their function, many of them, their function related to synaptic transmission. So first, uh, we want to quickly test if we manipulate the neural activity in the IPN, uh, whether it can affect behaviors, especially alcohol drinking behavior. The classical data show that the lesion of the IPN increase the lower motor activity. So similarly, when we use the uh, inhibitory drug selectively expressed in the GABAergic neuron in the IPN because the predominant neuronal type in the IPN is GABAergic neurons. So when we apply CNO, we observe that the female, they show um, higher locomotor activity, but not in males. Then we measure the alcohol drinking behavior. Uh, surprisingly, without CNO, just the expression of an inhibitory drug, a GI-coupled drug alone in the IPN lead to enhanced alcohol drinking in both male and female. This probably caused by the side effect of overexpression of drug coupled, uh, G-protein uh, G coupled re receptor. However, this data show us actually IPN uh, garbage neuron, they could regulate the alcohol drinking. So combined with the earlier uh, spatial sequencing data, we decided to explore further the function of IPN and the sex differences in the neurons in the IPN. So let's first talk about the media habanula to IPN circuit. It's a very fascinating structure. Uh, the media habanula almost exclusively project to the IPN and the, the mm, ventral two-third portion of the media habanula mostly contain cholinergic neuron. And they topographically innervate the dorsal and the rostral portion of the IPN. And the ventral portion of the media habanula, which comp uh, contain Hachikini uh, neuron, which produce a neuropeptide called a substance P. And they only innervate the lateral wings of the IPN and uh, they can re uh, they release both acetylcholine and the substance P into the IPN at the same time. Both types of neuron they can co-release glutamate, and you can see the those cholinergic uh, neurons axon in the IPN. They cross the mid midline twice in the IPN and the form a structure that looks like a number eight. <clears throat> So to further explore the sex differences in gene expression in the IPN, we perform single cell RNA sequencing. The advantage of a single cell RNA sequencing over the spatial sequencing I told you earlier is a single cell sequencing can at first, it can achieve a real single cell resolution. So we can profile the gene expression in every single individual cells in the IPN. Also, the messenger RNA capture rate in this assay is like 20 times higher than the spatial sequence. So with this assay, we can uh, accurately cluster the cells in the IPN into different subtypes according to the gene expression. And uh, because I am an electrophysiologist, when I collect the brain tissue, uh, first I observe other people collect brain tissue for RNA sequencing. I noticed some issue uh, seriously impact the sequencing result because when people don't have the training in electrophysiology, when they collect brain tissue, uh, first, uh, their brain dissection procedure is not uh, fast enough. Also, they don't use AC ACSF, nor do they oxygenate those ACSF. They just use a regular saline s s solution. And they just use a brain matrix and a two razor blade to very crudely cut a big piece of a uh, brain slice and use a, a, a pump puncher to punch out the, the, the region. However, if you look at the IPN, IPN is a 750 micron little ball. 
So if you use the brain matrix and the distance between two razor blades is like one millimeter, you're gonna have a lot of a brain region from other area. Also, when you do the whole procedure, like a dissection gonna take like almost uh, seven minutes in regular saline without all oxygen. A lot of cells uh, will be dead, dead. So I saw some core quality single cell RNA sequencing data. They only, they only capture like a one big cluster. In my opinion, the reason they cannot de uh, further differentiate those cells based on their gene e expression only because during tissue collection, all the cells, they suffer too much. They almost dead. So you literally just see one type of cells, which are the cells barely survive. So we use the electrophysiology approach. We first use a specialized ACSSF, uh, oxygenated and cold, to first quickly perfuse the uh, animal to reduce the metabolism and the neural activity. Then we use a vibratome to very accurately cut the, e e exactly the lead level to the IPN and uh, reduce the mechanical damage to the tissue. So with this modified pr procedure, we can significantly reduce tissue degradation and RNA contamination. And as you can see, we detect more cell type specific marker transcript and achieve refined cluster of re resolution. And since we are interested in the uh, neural tra transmission, so we decided to focus on uh, neuronal cluster one here because it contains a, a majority of the neurons in the IPN. So we, we first, uh, we use the enricher again. It is a gene list enrichment analysis platform developed by Dr. Avi Mahayan's lab, which is our collaborator at Mount Sinai. So when we put the gene sexually differentially regulated between male and female, oh, actually I put the genes upregulated in males into this, uh, analysis platform. And the top uh, cellular function uh, this analysis show me is actually neural projection, axon, axocytotic, uh, axocytic vesicle, and the synaptic vesicle. So all this uh, uh, cellular function inspired me to make this prediction that in male, uh, the neural projection and the synaptic release may be stronger than the female in the IPN. So to test this hypothesis, we want to we want to focus on the output projection derived from the I IPN, right? But the IPN project to many downstream re region. We want to figure out which region show the most pronounced sex differences. Then we're going to focus on that particular projection. So to do it, we use another uh, molecular approach called a multiplex analysis of a projections by sequence developed by Dr. Anthony Zetter at the Cold Spring Harbor. So this approach, you just inject a synthesis virus li library in the brain region you are e interested. In this case, it's the IPN, and those synthesis viral library will express unique messenger RNA barcode in every single neuron there. So each neuron only can be transduced, transduced by one synthesis virus, which carry one unique barcode. So we can uniquely label all the neurons in the IPN. Also together with this barcode, it also expressed an engineered presynaptic uh, protein, which gonna anterior greedily transport those barcodes to the presynaptic terminal and the tether it there. So after two days after the viral injection, if I collect the starting site, which is IPN and all other target region, and we do the bulk sequencing so for every individual re region, we can de detect the barcode. And based on the number of a barcode and the types of a barcode, we can quantitatively profile the projection pattern from all the cells, all the neurons in the IPN. For example, if in region A, you detect two types of a barcode, you, and then in region B, you will know there are two times more neurons in the IPN project to the region B compared to, uh, 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 sorry, project to region A compared to re region B. Another 
unique advantage for this technique is, for example, you detect the same barcode in two different brain regions. It would suggest that the same neuron in the IPN, they bifurcate and project to these two re re regions. So compared to traditional uh, viral fluorophore tracing technology, this approach allow you to really figure out the complicated projection connectome. So our data, although the previous data, they, have, they show IPN project to all those brain regions. But another study has uh, uh, quantified the abundance, the relative abundance for all those projections derived from the IPN. So we use MapSeq, we find out that actually more than half the IPN neuron, they project to media rafe new, new, new nucleus. Uh, in total, we sequenced the barcode from more than 50,000 IPN new, 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 new neurons. And this PCA plot is very interesting. It show you mm, the closer two projected region are clustered to each other, the more shared in the IPN innervated map. So for example, you're gonna see those three brain regions, they are very close, which means the same neuron in the IPN send a collateral projection to them. Interestingly, you see the medial phase right here, separated from all other brain regions. Because the barcode we detected in the medial phase is rarely detected in other brain regions, which means there is a big population of IPN neuron. They only projected to medial rafe, but not to other brain regions. So they establish designated projection only to the medial rafe. So the MapSeq result highlight both the importance and the uniqueness of the IPN to media rafe uh, projection. <clears throat> Although the total number of presynaptic terminal established from the IPN to the media rafe uh, does not differ between male and female, but uh, uh, because we have both the sequencing data and the MapSeq data show this uh, the neural projection may differ between male and female. So I'm wondering, although the anatomically, those uh, the IPN to media rafe don't have sex differences, but maybe functionally in male, those terminal, they just release more neural tra tra transmitter. So to test this uh, approach, I use uh, uh, electrophysiology combined with uh, optogenetics. And the first, uh, we inject the uh, channel redoxin in a create dependent manner uh, into the VGAT create mice. So all the <clears throat> garbage neuron in the IPN, they will express channel redoxin. Then they're gonna patch on a neuron in the me me media rafe. Then I'm gonna use constant optical stimulation to activate those uh, ter terminals and quantify the uh, release probability and the amplitude of optical stimulation induced response. At the same time, we also measure the spontaneous inhibitory post-synaptic current. So uh, our spontaneous inhibitory post-synaptic current data show the amplitude between male and female are the same, suggesting that the GABA receptor responsivity does not show sex-dependent differences in me, me Rafay, and our, our optical evoked IPSC data show that the male, the male neurons in the media Rafay always show an increased uh, higher amplitude than in females. Also, the, the PPR ratio is lower in males than in females, suggests higher release probability in this circuit. So if the post-synaptic GABA receptor responsivity is the same between male and female, and the release in male is higher than female, lead to the male always show higher uh, IPSC than in female. So this data suggests that indeed, uh, in male, the IPN to media rafe circuit is, uh, has a stronger synaptic connectivity than in females. <clears throat> well, because IPN uh, is very sensitive to sex hormone. So we wanna further measure whether the sex hormone affects the connectivity in the IPN to media rafe circuit. This time we use four group of mice. Uh, they are well type male and female, and the gonad ecotomized male and the female. We inject 
the channel redoxing into the IPN, and uh, we record optical evoked st stimulation in the neuron in the me medial phase. And our data show that in gonad, the gonad ecotomy surgery, uh, after gonad ecotomy, it significantly reduced the connectivity in the IPN to medial phase circuit in males. But in female, after gonad ecotomy, the connectivity actually is significantly enhanced. So this data show that the IPN to medial phase, they not only harbor sex dependent differences in connectivity, they also show the distinct response to respective sex hormones. So there are multiple layers of sex differences in the IPN to medial phase circuit. Then we're wondering uh, what's the behavior function related to alcohol consumption. So we use the intersectional strategy and uh, flex technology. So we e express uh, neurotoxins specifically in IPN neurons projecting to the medial phase. And then we measure their alcohol drinking behavior. So after we lesion, we selectively lesion the IPN to medial phase circuit, the alcohol drinking behavior increased in both male and female. So this data show that although this circuit has multiple layer of sex differences, but the behavior many manifestation for the lesion of this circuit is the same between the male and the female, suggesting a form of a sexual convergence. So the part one conclusion is uh, we noticed that there's a substantial group, even more than half of IPN neurons primarily project to the medial effect. And uh, also this uh, circuit from the IPN to medial effect is functionally stronger in male than in female. Also, sex hormone influence the functional connectivity in the IPN to medial effect in a sex-dependent manner. And most importantly, this circuit, they regulate alcohol drinking behavior in a sex-convergently manner. <clears throat> so after we finish our investigation on the circuit, we put all the, we switch our attention to the upregulated genes in females compared to males. So similarly, if I put the most significantly upregulated genes in the neuron in female into the enricher analysis platform, the highest function it highlights is actually nicotinic receptor signaling pathway. Therefore, we make the prediction that there is a sex differences in nicotinic receptor signal between male and female. And maybe the female has stronger nicotinic signaling than the males in the IPN. So first, uh, my colleague, Dr. Masago Ishikawa, used well-established approach to validate whether the nicotinic receptor function is stronger in female than in male. First, uh, he loaded, as they call it, in a glass pipette and used focal application to apply it to a IPN neuron 10 micron away uh, from the pipette. So if you pass, as I call it, directly at those neurons, you're gonna activate all the somatic receptors and it's gonna trigger the depolarization mediated by those somatic and nicotinic receptors. And if we compare the amplitude for such depolarization, we can gauge the function for those somatic nicotinic receptors. However, there is no differences between male and the female. Then we reason maybe this path application cannot uh, recapitulate all the synaptically released acetylcholine in the IPN. Remember earlier I mentioned all the acetylcholine input in the IPN derived from media habenium. So this time the, the um, channel redoxin is expressed in the cholinergic neuron in the media habenium and a high frequency optical train known to stimulate extensive acetylcholine release was applied to trigger acetylcholine release onto the IPN, and then we record it on the neurons uh, in the IPN. And by measure the amplitude, we can gauge the synaptic response, the somatic depolarization uh, in response to synaptically released acetylcholine. However, there are still no differences between male and the female. Uh, we were not dumped by this negative data. 
And some, uh, some earlier studies show that there are another cohort of the nicotinic receptor resided at the preterminal and the presynaptic site. And they can modulate the local neurotransmitter re re release. So our hypothesis is there are two populations of the nicotinic receptor in the IPN, each with distinct subcellular localization and a subunit composition. One of them is located at the soma and another population located at the presynaptic site. So the earlier experiment, we only, uh, we only focus on the somatic population. But by measure the depolarization, we cannot gauge the function for those preterminal nicotinic receptors. So my question is, could the sex differences reside in those preterminal nicotinic receptors? If so, how could we capture their modulatory effect on synaptic release in the IPN? So to do it, our, hypo our hypothetical model is uh, <clears throat> the acetylcholine release from media venula into the IPN gonna bind to, bind to those nicotinic receptors located at the preterminal site, cause the local depolarization at those presynaptic sites and dump more GABA into the IPN because the IPN garbage neuron, they form a very extensive garbage local network. So um, if I can hatch on any IPN garbage neuron and I record their spontaneous re, uh, inhibitory post-synaptic re response, so I can, I can mo monitor all the time how much GABA is released. And if at this time I turn on the acetylcholine re -re release, if I see the spontaneous GABA release increased in the IPN, it would say it would suggest that indeed acetylcholine can enhance GABA release from local terminal. Therefore, confirm there is a big population of nicotinic receptor at those presynaptic sites. So to do it, we again we express channel reduction in the cholinergic neuron in the media venula and we record, we patch on IPN new, new neurons. This time, uh, we use a very low level optical stimulation because we want to avoid activating those somatic nicotinic receptor. So we limit the stimulation frequency and the intensity to not trigger too much acetylcholine release. And we want to trigger modest level of acetylcholine release, which only can activate those preterminal, presynaptic, and nicotinic re receptor. And we measure the frequency of a spontaneous IPSC to gauge the GABA release. The, uh, our data found that in male, even with optical stimulation, which trigger acetylcholine release, there is no increase of a GABA release in IPN neurons. However, in females, whenever you turn on the acetylcholine release, there is an increase of a GABA release in the IPN neurons, suggests that Acetylcholine only upregulates GABA release in females, but not in males. So this evidence strongly suggests that there is a sex differences in, in acetylcholine, in cholinergic signal in the I IPN, and it is more robust in females than in ma males. Uh, this is my histochemistry staining of the acetylcholine esterase in the IPN. Because this enzyme can promptly degrade the release acetylcholine, therefore it limits the lifespan and the diffusion range for the release acetylcholine. The reason I show you this because I want to use another experiment to more robustly demonstrate indeed acetylcholine can induce, can enhance GABA release in the IPN. So I applied a physostigma, which is a blocker for this acetylcholine asterisk. So without the enzyme to degrade the release acetylcholine, they can linger around. Therefore, I amplify acetylcholine signal in the IPN. And if I give optical stimulation, same low intensity at this time, we can observe a much more robust enhance of a GABA release. Each individual spike here is uh, induced by GABA because it can be blocked by picrotoxin. Also, because we focus on GABA, we applied the blocker to glutamate receptor and the NMDA receptor all the time. 
uh, and when we quantify the uh, acetylcholine induced upregulation of GABA release with physostigma, we notice that actually both male and female, they show increase of GABA release. So right now the sex differences is gone in presence of a physostigma. So the natural question is, maybe the different level of acetylcholine between male and female uh, induce the sex differences we observed earlier. Because remember earlier, we see that in, at the basal station without a physostigma, only female show acetylcholine induced upregulation of GABA. So maybe the male just have so high level of acetylcholine asterisk, they prevent the synaptically released acetylcholine to reach those terminal. So I used two different approach to quantify the level of acetylcholine asterisk in the IPN. That is not the case because male and the female, they show equal level of acetylcholine asterisk. And also there is a promising trend of an even higher level of acetylcholine acerase in female. So I'm gonna add more animals to further confirm this, but this data show you that acetylcholine acerase is not the factor cost of female neuron in the IPN more sensitive uh, to acetylcholine induced upregulation of GABA release. So what is it then? So right now, I just want to figure out what makes the female neurons, a female nicotinic receptor in the IPN more sensitive as they call it. So I first apply physostigmine and it enhanced the GABA release in both male and female. We already know that. And at this condition, I apply macmalamine, which is a blocker of the nicotinic receptor. Surprisingly, only female uh, in, only in female, upregulation of GABA can be blocked by macmalamine, ma ma suggesting that only female has nicotinic receptor, re uh, only female has nicotinic receptor regulating such GABA release. But in male, it's immune to macmalamine, ma suggesting a non nicotinic receptor mediated upregulation. So then we, our next question is uh, what's a synaptic mechanism? regulate the GABA release in male. So because acetylcholine binds to two types of the receptor, one is a nicotinic receptor, another one is a muscarinic receptor. Because muscarinic receptor is a G protein coupled receptor, it's, you cannot uh, uh, report as a direct depolarization caused by it. So not many people really do e-phase reporting on it. So my prediction is that in male, they have a lot of the muscarinic receptor. Although it's not as sensitive as female, they still can depolarize the local presynaptic terminal and upregulate the GABA release. Therefore, when I apply physostigmine together with scopolamine, which is a blocker of a muscarinic receptor, I prevented physostigmine induced upregulation of a GABA release in males. So right now my data show that it's not just the sex differences, but a sex dichotomy existed in the cholinergic regulation in the IPN between male and female. Only female has a highly sensitive nicotinic receptor at the presynaptic site to regulate the GABA release. However, in male, they only depend on a less sensitive muscarinic receptor mediated mechanism. Since I already captured significant sex dichotomy in the cholinergic transmission in male and female, I want to further measure how this system responds to alcohol. Because the media habanula cholinergic neuron provides a major input, acetylcholine input into IPN, so first we measure how alcohol affects the firing of a cholinergic neuron in the media habanula. So we apply 44 millimolar alcohol onto the media habanula. This concentration of alcohol equals to the human blood, uh, brain alcohol level after four drinks. So that level of, a, of a drinking induces uh, motor impairment and uh, stupor. So my, our data show that the, if you apply alcohol, uh, both cholinergic neurons in male and females exhibit enhanced firing activity. So if the firing activity in cholinergic neuron in media venue increased, 
they got a dump more neurotransmitter into their main pro projection area, which is IPN. And the acetylcholine is one of those neurotransmitters released into the IPN. So then I focus on the impact for that increased acetylcholine in response to alcohol treatment. So I measure the spontaneous inhibitory process synaptic current in IPN neurons from both male and female. The amplitude remains the same between male and the female after alcohol treatment, suggests that the alcohol treatment does not affect the post-synaptic responsivity uh, of GABA receptor in the IP neuron. However, only in female, they show a robust increase of a frequency after alcohol treatment, suggests that the alcohol increase uh, as a calling release and only female, because they have highly sensitive nicotinic receptor at the local presynaptic site to regulate the GABA release, they can pick up that as they call it and translate it into more GABA release. Similarly, if I apply mycomalamin together with alcohol, that increase of a spontaneous IPSC frequency is blocked in female. So our conclusion is uh, the, the uh, Asno enhanced acetylcholine release in both male and female from the media venue. But only female, they are equipped those highly sensitive nicotinic receptor at those presynaptic sites. So they can upregulate the GABA release and translate it into a more GABA tone in the local IPN neural networks. So the part two conclusion is the IPN neurons in female, uh, they have a nicotinic receptor very sensitive as I call it, and they can enhance the GABA release in response to uh, uh, alcohol exposure. So after we show the nicotinic receptor show robust sex differences between male and female, uh, we want to know which uh, su su subunit contribute to it. There are many subunits of the nicotinic receptor. However, if we study the IPN, one subunit uh, stand out, which is an alpha-5 subunit. Uh, because this alpha-5 subunit is not commonly found in the brain, but it is highly enriched in the media habanula to the IPN to media rafe circuit. Uh, the gene encode this alpha-5 subunit also encode the uh, uh, alpha-3 and the beta-4 subunit. And uh, together, this uh, three subunit can form a very unique Type of a nicotinic receptor called a ganglionic nicotinic receptor. They are rarely found in the brain and they are mostly enriched in the peripheral nervous system. But in the IPN, there's a, a high level of such ganglionic nicotinic receptor. And any nicotinic receptor recruit alpha 5, they're going to gain increased affinity to acetylcholine. And uh, there are several more lines of evidence suggest the importance of the alpha-5 subunit in the IPN. First, if you look at the panel below, it will show you that in the, the, this is a safe force staining and the, the high dose nicotine induced neural activation in the IPN. However, if you delete alpha-5 gene in those uh, animals, such high dose nicotine induced neuroactivation in the IPN is abolished because nicotine is a selective uh, ligand to nicotinic receptor. This data just show you that uh, the alpha-5 subunit containing nicotinic receptor plays the dominant role in mediating the neural activation in the IPN. Another important evidence suggesting the crucial role, the interesting function for the alpha-5 is it actually regulates aversion. If you look at the self administration, self -administration data of uh, mice of uh, nicotine, you can see a reversed U, uh, a reversed U shape in the dose response curve, suggesting that the low dose nicotine is rewarding, but the high dose is aversive. However, if you remove alpha 5 in this mice, the aversive dose, which limit is uh, consumption is significantly reduced in those uh, alpha-5 knockout mice, suggesting that it is alpha-5 containing nicotinic receptor mediated the aversive effect. So all this data suggests that maybe the sex differences we observed earlier 
involve alpha 5 sub subunit in the IPN. So first, we want to measure the uniformity of alpha 5 in the alcohol drinking behavior. So we first compare the drinking behavior between wild type mice and knockout mice. We compare both male and female. In male, there is no differences between uh, wild type and the KO mice. However, in female, uh, the KO mice, the KO female drink significantly less compared to wild type mice. Furthermore, if we use a CRISPR approach to selectively delete the alpha-5 genes in the neurons in the IPN, we significantly reduce the alcohol consumption in those females. Furthermore, we use an AAV-mediated gene overexpression to rescue the alpha-5 expression only in the IPN for these KO females, and their alcohol consumption just go up again. So all this data robustly suggests that alpha-5 subunit nicotinic receptor in the IPN regulate alcohol consumption only in females, but not in males. Then we wonder if how, nicotine, how alpha-5 subunit regulate the synaptic transmission contribute to such sex differences in alcohol drinking behavior. So first, uh, we measure the alcohol-induced increase of a GABA release in male and female in response to alcohol in both wild type and KO mice. In male, because alcohol does not elevate uh, the GABA release, we didn't uh, measure them. But if we measure the GABA release in female KO mice, that alcohol-induced elevation of a GABA release is gone, suggesting that it is alpha-5 containing nicotinic receptor mediate such regulation of GABA release in response to alcohol. Uh, there are earlier data, in, in vitro data show that uh, the alpha-5 can render the nicotinic receptor more resilient to receptor desensitization. Therefore, I want to test whether this is the case on the brain slice in the IPN new, new neurons. So to do it, I combine the physostigmine with alcohol because physostigmine gonna block all the acetylcholine asterisks. So the release, the acetylcholine gonna linger in there to amplify the signal. On top of that, I gonna apply alcohol to further enhance the release of acetylcholine into the IPN. So I call it a nicotinic receptor stress test. So if you see the wild type mice, they actually show a prolonged enhancement of a GABA release under this nicotinic receptor's uh, stress test. However, in the KO, their elevation is not that robust. It's a, there is a transient increase, then it's gradually go, go, go down. This is the same case in the wild type males. I didn't show the data here. So all this data suggests that indeed, the female uh, IP neurons they have alpha-5 receptor, which make them very re resilient to a high level of acetylcholine. So they are resilient to desensitization. So all this data show that because the female IP neurons, they have a nicotinic alpha-5 receptor at the presynaptic terminal. They are highly sensitive to acetylcholine. Also, they are more resilient to the receptor desensitization. So they can keep uh, maintaining the gabaergic uh, suppression there very high. And that may contribute to the increased, to the higher alcohol consumption than females, than in males. So the part three conclusion is uh, nicotinic receptor enable, uh, alpha-5 nicotinic receptor enable uh, persistent upregulation of a GABA release in the IPN in response to alcohol exposure and contribute significantly to alcohol drinking in females. And I want to share some of my future studies. <clears throat> Earlier, I showed you I use a, a Visium spatial sequence. But uh, in that older uh, technology, uh, you remember the, the diameter for each disk is 50 micron. So it's going to capture a, a, a lot of cells. So it cannot achieve real single cell resolution. So this time, I'm using a technology called a slide seek. If slide seek, Rather than having a 50 micron big, big disk, it has a 10 micron small bead, contains thousands of uh, oligonucleotide. 
if oligonucleotide can be mapped back to the original spot where this bead is located. So again, if I apply the brain slice onto this tile, comprises of a, a ten thousands of a small bead, and I, I, I see sequencing the messenger RNA captured by each bead and map them back. I can really achieve a single cell resolution, spatial gene expression map. So I already profiled the spatial gene expression in the midbrain, in male and the female. We haven't completed the analysis of the data, but just based on the preliminary spatial gene expression map, for example, this area, uh, it's uh, corresponding to here, which is a ventral tegmental area. If you look at the gene, the highest expressed in those genes, they are uh, dopa decarboxylase and the dopamine transporter TH and the ALDH1. All these genes are known to be enriched in the ventral tegmental area, dopaminergic neuron. So this preliminary data just show the validity and the promising future for this uh, spatial sequence. Also, if you look at the cluster eight, they are highly enriched in this small area right above the VTA. This area is called the Rothschild linear uh, rafe. You see they have a, and if you look at the highest expression genes in this uh, brain region, it is CARP, which is a cocaine and amphetamine regulated transcript protein. It play important function, uh, function in alcohol withdrawal. So my next step may be just focus on this cluster. You see, I just run this essay. I didn't even do anything. Just look on this map. It already provided me some useful future de direction. So with deeper analysis, especially compare male with female, I'm going to learn more about the interesting uh, molecular me me mechanism uh, behind the sex differences. Yeah, I really, I'm very grateful for the strong support and the mentoring of Dr. Paul Kenny. Also without the crucial help from all the members in our lab, I could not complete this pro project in three years, especially last summer when my son was born. And my, my, my colleague, they helped me complete the many important uh, experiments during the meantime. So I'm very grateful. Also, the NIH and the Cure Addiction Now Foundation supported this re research. Thank you so much. Well, Dr. Wang, it is great to have you back again this year. And um, so uh, Dr. Wang was with us last year for our presentation. So it's wonderful to see the progress in your um, work and congratulations on your new uh, baby. Hey, thank um, you. So I want to open up the floor now, and if um, any of our attendees have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Um, it's going to be an open uh, round table. And actually, we have a question already um, entered by um, Jag Canwall. So go ahead, and if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question, or I will be happy to ask it for you if I don't hear from you in like five seconds. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, my question uh, was, uh, I was curious about, uh, I missed the early part of the talk, so I'm not sure if you addressed that, but uh, what is the mechanism by which alcohol has its effect on uh, these, uh, you know, neurons? Uh, yeah, because we focus on a circuit that has two d different brain regions. Let's focus on the, the first brain region on the ops stream, which is a media habanula. Uh, in response to alcohol treatment, the firing activity in the media venula increased. I think the cellular mechanism underlying this is alcohol enhanced the neurotransmitter release onto the media venula neuron, which activated their firing. However, we never pharmacologically test that. So to test that, we have to block the certain new neurotransmission in the media venula when we apply alcohol and quantify the firing activity. For how the alcohol enhanced acetylcholine release at the terminal end in the IPN, yeah, that is also hard to gauge because alcohol different than, for example, earlier I studied cocaine. 
the cocaine is very straightforward. It's just target as a dopamine tra tra transporter. So we know it has a very specific target, but alcohol can influence many different types of receptor, protein, even the membrane properties. So if alcohol causes certain change, it's very hard to pinpoint what exactly it, it is. But right now our data with the uh, sequencing and the transgenic mice, at least we know nicotinic receptor participate in this process, although it may not be the only mechanism here. Thank you so, so much for your e e interest. Great. Anyone else? I want to open up the floor. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Hi, that was an amazing talk. I really enjoyed listening to it. Uh, I just have a quick question. I, I mean, I learned so much. So, so thank you. Your, your work is really amazing. Um, thank I, you. I love the the cool technique about you know the single cell resolution that you're moving forward with. I think this is you know going to have some really incredible applications in in many different areas. Um, but I, I also I, I come from you know a work e exploring the function of the habenula, and so I was really trying to uh, to really focus in on that. And so my question is really just about those nicotinic versus muscarinic receptors in the IPN. And I was just simple question, just wondering if if you um, if there were differences in the muscarinic receptors as well between males and females. Um, I, I you know I understand that that you know you showed really clearly the differences in the alpha five subunit for the nicotinic receptors, and I think that's fascinating. So I was just wondering what the function of that muscarinic receptor was in the circuit, and if you've thought about that too. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, another figure I didn't show is the actually in female they also have some muscarinic receptor. So in female IP neuron, they have both mechanisms to regulate the cover release, but in male, they only have a muscarinic receptor to regulate the release. And uh, I apply a muscarinic receptor agonist, and I notice that the GABA release frequency and the amplitude both increase if I activate a muscarinic receptor. So it also induces some post-synaptic re response. Uh, Again, I suspect that there are two populations of muscarinic receptor there. One located at the presynaptic terminal, regulated GABA release. Another one, they may just maybe even linked to GABA A receptor in the somatic, uh, in the postsynaptic area. So that's why I observe uh, enhanced uh, amplitude after I activate those, all the muscarinic receptors there. Because the muscarinic receptor, they are G-protein coupled, it's very hard to gauge their direct impact. The only way we can measure it right now is just uh, indirectly gauge the other neurotransmitter. So we only can guess. I feel it's very hard to, to, to really directly quantify their function, but they could be very promising drug, drug target. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I have a related question too, which is, uh, sort of, um, you mentioned earlier in the talk about the V-glute uh, and that that's also expressed in that circuit. And I'm always fascinated about um, the co-release of the neurotransmitters. So, I don't, and I thought maybe you might come back to that at some point, but you could, could you just comment on perhaps the co-release of, of glutamate? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. We actually measure the glutamate release in response to alcohol. It uh, does not change. So then we, because at the beginning, we didn't see much very robust readout that uh, forced us to gradually looking at a more indirect effect. Then we find this, wow, it's so uh, in, in interesting differences. So we just uh, turn around and then turn around and finally see, see something, yeah. Yeah, fascinating story. Thank you so much, yeah. Dr. Wonderful. Thank you for your wonderful questions, Martine. Um, I want to keep the floor open to see if anybody else has any more questions. I don't see um, um, any additional questions in the chat box, but Fernando, hey, so Fern thank you, Dr. Wang. Awesome. Fernando, thank you to see you here again. Yeah. So, Junchi Wang, I guess we're going to have to make a date for you to come back next year to give us another right. update on your project. And soon uh -huh. Dr. Wang is also going to be, um, fingers crossed, and um, a professor somewhere at another institution, and we'll see great work from you. And thank with you so that, much. I want to thank everybody for attending, and especially Dr. Wang for your time. So we'll be in close touch. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.